Welcome to the Keep on the Grass podcast. We're broadcasting in the Potlandia Tour Bus. Go follow them at Potlandia Tours on Instagram. We have Lambo Lawson here at Lambo Lawson and myself, Selena PDX420. And our guest star today is Harley from at Smoke Lady J's and at Ladies of Paradise. Go follow her on Instagram. Go check her out. We're going to be doing hopefully a giveaway together soon so follow both of us for sure to uh, stay tuned into that and harley i'm gonna hand this to you oh yeah should i be introducing myself yeah i mean yeah whatever you want okay to cool i'm harley i am one of the owners of creative agency ladies of paradise we also have a pre-roll line called smoke La- well it's called lady j's our instagram is smoke lady j's but the premise of our entire businesses was to pay more attention to women basically and so we stand by that. We try our hardest to work with women cultivators and women-owned dispensaries when we can. And yeah, it's it's really fun. <laughs> Fine. Yes. Yes. So I love that um, Smoke Lady Jays is a woman-owned company. Actually, Harley is part owner here. She is the owner here. So we're really excited to have her in the store. We just recently started carrying their joint packs right here so look how cute these are <laughs> all pink and everything they're adorable we have a cute little um like video on our instagram for them uh being in the store now and we're really excited <coughs> to have them in fact we're smoking them on the bus right now right now right now <laughs> we have some questions of course for you harley oh yeah, of I'm course. ready for them um like first of all how old were you when you started smoking pot came off crazy my first time do you want me to hold this or you or i don't even know i don't we'll just pass it back and forth <laughs> um the first time that i smoked weed i think i was 16 and i vividly remember asking the guy that i knew that had weed if he if i could buy five weeds in joint form oh. that's the words that i said oh, yeah. and i'm like literally and him and like, he was in the car with like four dudes and they all just busted up laughing and they're like, oh, you don't order weeds for one and also in joint form. Like, who the fuck do you think we are? Right. Um, but they rolled us joints and they oh. gave them to him, us that way because we really wouldn't have known what to do with them. Mm. But 16 for me on that one. <laughs> damn. Uh, damn. All right. All right. You just killed it. <laughs> so was it just you and a bunch of females or did you have guys? Me and one friend. Thing? It was one girl. Oh, well, yeah, of course you were getting your J's roll. Well... Yeah, did yeah. he teach you the vernacular? Because I don't even know what you asked for. What did you end up? What did you end up buying? He gave me five joints. Uh, so was there a point five in each one? I have zero no, idea. No, no, he like remember. charged me a Were dollar amount. Up? It was just a transaction. I was like, so do I like? Do we do like a handshake and mm. I like slide money into your hand and we like walk away casually? So like, I guess my question is, do you remember <laughs> whether or not you were? <laughs> either beat or given too much weed oh i i'm sure he gave us a great amount of weed he was a good friend yeah i i totally trust him (laughs) cool all right shout out to you man (laughs) nick tesco because now (laughs) now she has her own lady j company where they're still rolling them for thank you (laughs) there we go (laughs) yes i like it truly (laughs) you don't (laughs) so yeah i was curious um ladies of paradise came before lady j's yes so what is Ladies of Paradise? How did it start? Let's start with that. Okay, cool. So Ladies of Paradise actually was a jewelry company before it was anything cannabis. My business partner, not here today, Jade, um, she and her partner at the time were from Texas and they moved out here to open a couple dispensaries. Um, I, meanwhile, grew up in Southern Oregon, huge growing community for as long as I can remember. And so I really grew up just around cannabis. Um, and her and I both had, she had a jewelry company, I had a clothing company. We were getting really uninspired by it, just like selling things to people online. And she, in the in the process of opening these dispensaries, was like, Harley, there are so many incredible women that are like not getting any attention, that are really doing badass things in this like new emerging industry. And so she was like, let's start a blog and let's just like spotlight women in the industry and so it all started with us going and doing these like really elaborate editorial photo shoots of women growers and women extractors and it was just nothing that the cannabis industry had seen before and we got a lot of we just got a lot of exposure really quickly because it was like disco balls and like literal like wedding dresses (laughs) in like farms okay. and it was just like yeah we were merging fashion and cannabis and mm, 
it was just a totally new fresh thing and so we started doing photo shoots for tons of brands and very quickly started um us like actually branding companies and starting with like logo design and web development and marketing strategy and us just basically showing people like hey like if you're going to have a brand like you should you should market to women too if not like I mean, obviously, we need to market to everybody, um, but there just there was so much of it was over sexualizing women. If you were meant, if you were including women, it was like a hot woman in a bikini, you know. And so we were very much so trying to kind of like, I don't know, take cannabis back and not have it be that like we're getting, we're our bodies are selling the weed, like you're selling the weed to us because we're smoking it all the time. Um, but so that's how Ladies of Paradise started, and uh, and after we were doing that for two years, we had so many just amazing connections with farms and distribution. And one of our, actually one of our good friends who owns distribution was like, if you guys come out with a product, like you know, I will help you. And we've had just mass mass support from people that we just like picked up along the way. From we threw a lot of cannabis consumption events for a while, and that like that really just grew our community so much because it was like, oh my god, we can. Go to, we would literally, th one time, this is so fun, uh, it's the first time that we, um, that we threw a party. It was 250 people in our home, and we literally took all the beds. <coughs> yeah, dude, we, we had a big house, but we took all the beds and the furniture and literally moved them out of the house into, like, the back, um, the back shed, into closets, and we, like, made these art installations in every single room. And every, they were literally costume parties. We got written up in the Willamette Weekly, literally, of being like, who are these girls? That, it was it was so epic. Like, And people were like, the cannabis parties that are going on are so stale and boring. And the parties that we were throwing were young artists. Like, it was just, like, all these people wanting to connect and smoke weed. And it, like, it was just, like, really authentic. Um, and so, yeah. So we had a really great, uh, a really great, just community around us so when we started lady jays we had so much like amazing support honestly it's been a game changer to have that support that's lady amazing jays. yeah so is that what brought mm -hmm. on lady jays the mm -hmm. connections mm -hmm. yeah. well yeah i feel like it made it a lot easier that we that we had people that we could ask questions to because i mean like her and i had no idea at all how to run a pre-roll company and honestly like now that I understand brands and we did we did um, we did some carts for a little bit and we're working on some edibles right now and so like I understand how a developing a brand and how the processes work and pre-rolls are pre-rolls are really challenging because there's so much quality control that has to go into it it's like every like every single every single pack has 10 10 opportunities to mess up and it's like everyone, need, like, you, like, it's like if your edible's like a little bit of a weird shape, whatever, you still eat it. Mm. If your pre-roll isn't packed the right way, it might not smoke, you know? And so it's been, it's been a really big challenge. I'm grateful that we've got to like do it, but it's definitely been like really wild switching producer, producers and finding different like machinery and having to like correct the machinery and change it. And like, yeah, it's, it's been a whole, a whole situation. <laughs> it's been a run. It really has. <laughs> Yeah. And how long did you think about making the company before it actually came out? Um, we really only talked about it for like three months. Um, probably even less than that, honestly. Jade and I are both really like get up and go kind of gals. And so like when we get an idea, we just like try to go for it. And we, we had like people that could produce it and people that could su supply flour and distribute like immediately. So it moved really quickly. That's great. Yeah. That's great. It was really awesome. How many strains do you have in production right now? Like on yeah. the market? We have more than we ever have had right now. Ever. Yeah, there's like 23 strains what? right now. Yeah. Because normally we, so last year we had two, um, two big farm partners and we ran into a problem of selling out all the time. We couldn't keep up. Right. And so this year I sourced big like. Big problem. I know, right? But it is a big problem. Great because problem Yeah. No, it's definitely like a big problem. If you can't I'm supply to problem. the dispensaries and then the customer can't buy it, then they Facts. switch to another product and uh, then they love that product. Yeah. It's like a funeral. Yeah. It's like a 10 second funeral yeah. for that company's like product. It is. And so we, yeah, like what last year got? was so crazy. And then we went to like, you know, everyone's out of weed right before harvest. And we're like, we literally have no weed. We're completely sold out like what do we do you know um so this year we sourced way way more flour and that was something that we usually only had like six to eight strains and so many different dispensaries would just like want variety so i was like okay i'm gonna like work hard this year to like get 
many more um, farms that we're working with and all getting flour coming in at different times. So we have like a wide, wide variety to choose from. Dang. Yeah. So that's dope. What's your favorite out of all the Lady J flavors? Um, <coughs> Forbidden Fruit is definitely my what? favorite. All right. It's such a good strain. It's fucking, it's amazing. It's from Million Elephants, which is like one of our favorite, like family owned farms. And you're not the only one to tell me that to today. Somebody else. Dude, they're the, the best. Food. It's so amazing. Mm. And like, I mean, I'm also crucial to just Millions Flower in general because we like, that was our farm that we like, we were doing like some trade work for them. So we were there from like planting to harvest and getting to like, be there with the plants every step of the way so like that's like our favorite farm that we work with because of that the one i got from you guys we actually don't have in the store but i like a lot um elephant crackers mm -hmm. yeah that one was really good oh yeah dude million strains are yeah, right. are really good fire <laughs> you got anything else in the works you know when it comes to the cannabis companies or yeah are well, we expanding from we're working yes so actually working on some Oklahoma deals and some Colorado deals in California right now, um, which is super exciting. Uh, but it's just like, you just have to find the right people and that's like what's hard. It's like, it, it, there's just so many people to work with nowadays and so much just like money that's tossed around and it's, yeah. And especially too, being like young girls, we've been offered like the worst deals over and over and over again. And so now we like understand that like, oh my gosh, you can't just like trust people when they tell you like, they're gonna do this for this. And so it's been it's been a journey, but we so we have those three uh, states that hopefully will be in very soon. And then also we have an edible company called Ooh, Venus Electra that's that we're what working we're getting on into. right that's now. That's what we want to hear. Dude. Cutthroat stuff. Hell yeah. What's this edible? What what is it? Gummies? Yeah, they're just it's honestly like we're starting with CBD and CBG, and CBG is hot right mm -hmm, now. It really is. Shout out yeah. to you. Uh, and so we're doing those gummies first, but we're like, hey, if we're, if we're doing this and we're setting up the process, like we might as well have a THC option as well. Haven't exactly figured that part out yet, but it, it's in the works. And you said it's going to be called what? Venus? Venus Electra. And we're going to have that at Grass Cannabis Exchange oh, on yeah. the 7th Avenue. <laughs> we're probably going to debut the product or whatever. I don't know. Exactly. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I could just be spitballing here. I don't know. We're probably going to have, like, a big vendor day when it comes out. There we go. I'll Lady be James, there. Venus flying in a huge <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> sick. So uh, I have to ask this question because it's my question to ask. All right. What's your question? Top five dead or alive favorite strains. Okay. Hold on. Let me look this real quick. And then I will wrote get it down. back to it. Uh, I thought you said, let me write this real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I started with Forbidden Fruit. Okay. No particular order though. You don't no, have to like. Lie. For sure. But another million elephant strain that I am obsessed with is blueberry muffins. Okay. And then I love tangies. I love Agent Orange. Really I like tangy, tangelo, any of those real citrusy, that's like easy. yeah. And then GMO cookies. Oh, it's been a new, that's totally like a new fave. Yeah. Okay. Did you gotta have different weed for different things. Oh you hell know yeah! What I, mean? I just never want what sativa throws out. I never want to feel like. That's how I call it. Oh my gosh, I'm like, like fuck malfunction. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, I, I more or less um, always want to feel the opposite. Like, if I want to feel like that, I'll drink an energy drink. And then I'll like, you know what I mean? I don't know. I'll get, get all crazy. Yeah, I'll get all fucking jittery, go to the gym, fucking lift things I can't even lift, and mm -hmm. then go home and be in pain tomorrow when I don't drink an energy drink. Yeah, yeah. see, I think it sounds better maybe this. to just smoke a sativa I don't know, and find because that balance of working out but not pushing yourself too far yeah it doesn't do what you think like, i can smoke a sativa and not want to do shit i'll just feel like i have a whole lot of things on my to-do list then i'll just have so many things that i won't start any of them and i'll just sit there off a of sativa because i'm thinking about what i'm going to do next because i have so many things to do next okay well i guess sativa. that's why everyone needs to know their strains because Weed works differently for everyone. Hell yeah, man. Puts mm -hmm. a big blunt right there. What is that? Is that ice cream cake? That's ice cream cake. So that's like technically a hybrid. That's one of my favorites for sure. Yeah. My favorites change like almost every episode as well. Yeah, and honestly like... Have you ever watched our show? No. 
I have a I have a long list of sh of, every, of every strain that I've ever tried, and it's like absolutely long. Yeah, I have like a, a list of like three hundred strains. Not even just my favorite, just oh, everything that ever I've tried. ever tried. Yeah, I have a whole, I have a list of everything. Have I've you ever tried. got one of those gold leaf journals? No, what's that? It's super cool. It's this uh. The journal, it's like, here's a strain, what, and it asks you all these questions, like, on 1 to 10, and so it's, like, basically a way, for, a database that you can have for your personal, like... What? Yeah, I should probably give you one. I think I have a lot. What? Hell yeah. Definitely need that. That's crazy. It's like a Pokedex? I don't know what a Pokedex is. is. Yeah, you know, it's like a Pokedex for weed. You gotta catch them all. That's kind of how I feel about there it. There we go. You know what I mean? Um, that's, like, why I came to Portland is to catch all the, the real strains. And some you of them like have died for sure, but yeah. some of them have died before I, you know, started making the money that I'm, that, you know, that I have today to try the strains for sure. you know, at the rate that I do or have the connections now working in the weed industry to try things that I do uh, at the rate that I do. Yeah. So like one of my favorite ones was cherry pie back then when I first came here, but I didn't live here. Realized cherry pie is sativa as fuck. And I don't really like that that much. And then I never seen it again, and now it's cherry cream pie when it has reemerged. And I've never seen cherry pie itself anymore. It got crossed. Right, but now where's its where's its parents? For sure, what happens to it? Where's yeah? They get bred out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's now, really weird with the strains too, because I feel like it's like constantly like molding and changing and breeding together. That's the it's interesting like, part about it. So she says bred out. Does that mean? There's, there's multiple strains that it's like the six degrees of separation. It got longer and longer and longer away from its parents to the point where now the ancestry is, you know, obviously not totally different, but the family tree is growing somewhere else. So you got like a cherry chem, let's say, does that come from cherry pie, whatever. I'm just naming all things cherry. Yeah. Is it like that? That's what you mean by bread out? Yeah. So many strains come from one that this one is no longer. Yeah. It's like... You know, having as many puppies as you can from one female and then just, like, let her chill. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, it does seem weird because it's, like, it's not that they're, like, <laughs> gone. I feel like people just go with trends and it's, like, that that cherry pie turns into a cherry chem and everyone's buying the cherry chem so cherry pie just stops being grown but, as much. Right, like, but I've noticed things. It's still, like, like around said, somewhere. Working in the game, I've noticed things go away seasonally like i've said on other episodes and sometimes permanently i've seen strains go from being the best of the best to becoming bee buds to becoming outdoor to becoming whatever yeah or you know what i mean and then once they become whatever then you don't see them no more mm -hmm. you know what i mean like yeah. i've seen that happen with things like i don't know a couple strains like certain times of the year it happens to gelato certain times of the year like right now Mendo breath that's happening too. You know what I'm saying? You find some really good ones that somebody's gonna tax you for, it, or it's just really bad ones everywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so I say that to say, like, when does it end? Like, when can somebody ever say I've tried everything for this Pokédex to even? You can't. Mm -hmm. And also, too, on top of that, <laughs> people name things different names, and then they go into the market even though they're the same thing. Yes. Right. So it's like, who really even knows? Even not to say, too, like, you name it something, and then you crossbreed it with something, and then the original is still different, so then that crossbreed isn't even the crossbreed you think it is. Like, I don't even know that. Like, I feel like at this point, it's so all over the place. Right. This is an right? ice cream like, cake. This is vanilla cream pie. It's got to be. No way. About no. to be real high no here. Way. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. It's gone. I labeled it differently then, because this is vanilla no, cream pie. No, you didn't. I had to have. No, you didn't. You s I had to have. No, you didn't. Nah, <laughs> no way. No way. I mean, it's my weed. You know what I'm saying? It's whatever. It's my bud. You smoking out here? It smells like vanilla cream pie. But anyway, Miss Lady J, <laughs> where did the name come from? Why uh, Lady J's? Even though, like, I get it. Uh, well, Let's actually, my business you. partner came up with that one all on her own. I had nothing to do with it. She can't. Actually, that's a lie. I mean, she did come up with it on her own, but we had a different name that we had in mind at first. I can't remember what it was. She came up with the first one and this one, but for some reason, we couldn't go with it. Oh, another brand came out, like, right at the same time, and so we had to change it, but we ended up liking this more. But I imagine, like... Lady J's. Yeah, yeah like just, like... It was probably such a good name you guys questioned if it already wasn't mm -hmm. a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
It's even like four and four. Four letters in lady, four letters in jays. Totally. Perfect. It does. And like Jade's name is J, so it's kind of fun too. You know? It's pretty dope. Yeah. It's pretty dope. Hell yeah. You make music too, don't you? I do. Tell us about that. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Um, let's so go with. I'm in a band called New Constellations with mm. my best friend, Josh. And I'm, I'm mainly I'm a vocalist. He, I mean, I play, I play synth and like electric guitar like during our sets, but really like Josh is creating the music and I'm like writing the melodies and the lyrics and the vocals. And I feel like we're a really great team together. It's super fun. He actually uh, recorded like my first song that I wrote on like acoustic guitar when I was like 14 and he was 16. Fire. And we actually like weren't really that close for a long time. And I was a solo musician for a long time. And then I moved up here to Portland and wanted to be in a band. And he was like, I think I should be your band. And so we've been working on this for a while. And we actually just came out with our first single um, at the beginning of the year. And it's been doing really well on streaming um, platforms, which has been really fucking exciting. And Portland's, as I was saying to you earlier, Portland's just so supportive. Like, I feel like people really love to see people doing things. And also really like to see people that are, like, excited to be doing things. Right. And, yeah, so. Supportland. Yeah. Supportland. People yeah, call it that. that okay, oh, I've never heard that, that before. I, I, so I boom. Never heard that either. You never heard that? No. So I said it to somebody thinking I was making it up. Okay, so you did. And then hear somebody me. said to me, reality. I thought I made it up. And then somebody said to me, Oh yeah, they say that. Now this person could have been jelly at the fact I think that they were I jealous. I, I, I've never heard that. I've never physically they heard it, but I said it to somebody to another time and they said, Oh, they actually call it that. No. Never. Oh, I've really? never heard. I think that's a you thing. Well, now it's a us thing because we're all going to yeah, say we'll it. But you thing. Supportland. 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 <laughs> okay, yeah. We need to have a Supportland party. Supportland party. Right? That will be our like vendor day with exactly. you. Exactly. Right. Portland Supportland vendor, vendor, vendor day. day. Coming up and giveaway as well. <laughs> right. Portland. That's fine. Love it. Yeah, I, yeah, the lady just tried to strip me of my glory and say, oh, yeah. I heard that before, yeah, I think but I never heard jealous. it come out of somebody if else's If you've heard mouth. it before, comment below. <laughs> and tell us. Yeah, it's, watch it be so yeah. many comments like, "Yeah, I've been saying that shit." Okay. Watch, and then everybody would be like, and I still wouldn't believe it. I'd be like, "They're just trying to comment." Just you never commented before. <laughs> we know what the truth is here. In yeah, Portland's we all know um, this trifecta. Of, well, this <laughs> weird. There's five of us in here. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm so, getting really high. <laughs> yeah, so am I. Burnt out. Are you hitting these? Are you hitting this, man? He didn't. You hitting this, man? But he needs to. <laughs> so we got Purple Punch and we got Lemonade here. Yeah. I'm going to be a little bit more vocal. I'm going to get off of my weed kick right now and be a little more vocal. All right, cool. We got Lemonade, Purple Punch. Uh, the Lemonade is 18.56% THC. Then the purple punch is a whopping 21% THC. I just smoked both of them. Both of them are great. Um, this is the first time I'm smoking the ones that we have on our shelves. Like I said, the first ones I tried were not on our shelves. Uh, and they were pretty damn good. I like to think my stuff is better. Because, Whatever. you know, it's exclusive. She gave it to me. We tried it. You know, you didn't try it yet. But you can try these. <laughs> Three flavors at grass. I know I'm holding two and I said three and that is not a mistake ladies and gentlemen This is purple punch. This is lemonade and we have strawberry guava Back at the crib and you already know what I mean when I say crib. I mean 621 Southeast 7th Avenue That is grass Kansas You lighting that one you hitting this one A lot of blunts in the building, baby Selena get back to it. We're gonna figure out what we're smoking on this and then I'll update y'all What's this All right. one? All right how That's much time do you have? Okay. So, five minutes left here. That was it. That was it. Real quick, Harley, if there's anything else you want to plug about you guys, let us know. This is Gosh. <coughs> this anything is else that I want to plug? God, that's a... I feel like for some reason we don't have a ton of stuff going on right now. I mean, normally we would be having, like, a huge party every three months, but COVID is really shut things down in that way okay and this is an awful answer right now <laughs> <laughs> She's eyes but I'm like we feel like we've went over you know all the good shit that's going on um i mean we, we touched all the bases pretty quickly. yeah yeah that was good we're getting good at this good. 
Or we could just be so high that we think we like did such a good job covering all this shit and like we'll watch it tomorrow and be like that's probably what's gonna happen I'm gonna be like are you kidding me this was the most important thing you're supposed to talk about and you just didn't do you ever argue with somebody leave the argument and then think of other points later and you just want to oh, call absolutely. them back and be like, like I would have nailed that, that argument yeah, right. but mm-hmm. I didn't I came up empty like this answer that's ice cream cake okay, so right okay, so what was she says right it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. I just you. wanted to thank you for being part of season two, episode one on the podcast. Thank you for having yet. me. Absolutely. It was so yes. fun. Yes. You guys are amazing. <laughs> and like I said before, we're, we were talking uh, before this about a possible giveaway here soon, and hopefully, we could do a vendor day. I mean, we have an outside stage, we have a parking lot. Covid friendly, you know. So Hell we'll yeah. we'll set something up, dude. So shout out to Astro for the last event too. Before we get out of here too quickly, like that uh, uh, that event was crazy. Crazy. We got a really nice uh, limited edition T-shirt that's just uh, on sale limited time. Like obviously at Grass Canvas. Just a few left. Um, yeah. Only a few left. People were crowd surfing at our show. Dead what? ass. That's it was not that big. Were you playing? No. It Who was at the, the next Fire one? Nuts. He's playing. Yeah, I'm playing in July. So yeah, the Fire. Um, Nuns Wait, were playing. Okay, it's filming on all this afterwards. Dude, okay. even if you want to sit. Yeah, I would that's love something to sit. We can work out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. When are you playing? I'll play at that same show. July second. Yeah. Oh, the second. July second. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hot. Plan to see Come us to both on stage. <laughs> Yes. Uh, but yeah, motherfuckers were crowd surfing, dude. Like literally, no exaggeration. Towards the end of the night. That'll be literally. me, dude. It was your so show. crazy. Sick. Hell yeah. So crazy, and there there were so many more people that showed up than we expected to. People want to party right now. People are like, come on, let's hang out together. No exaggeration. Yeah. I'd say maybe two to three hundred people. Wow. Just like throughout the night, even. But <sighs> I, I would say the night, like I think it was more than that. I think, think at so? one time there was two hundred fifty people in the parking lot. Fuck yes. Enough yeah. to crowd Sorry, surf. To Enough to crowd surf. No, hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. Shit, yeah. We okay, good. Time. Yeah, enough to crowd surf. Yeah, and like that person was like that person was sturdily floating. I mean, so, he was good. Yeah. Yeah. He, he crowd surfs all the time. But yeah, thank you. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Grass Thanks Cannabis, 621 <laughs> yeah. Southeast 7 Ave. Thank you, Lady J's, for coming through at Smoke Lady J's, the face of Lady J's. Uh, we got a lot of work coming up. What'd you say? Second the second face. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it's a joint One of thing. two faces. One half yeah. of Lady J. Sorry. <laughs> uh, dang, we're gonna have you back on the show with the other half one. Oh yeah, she's right. You guys will love her. Yeah. Oh, great. That's we'll sick. have you both on. Mm-hmm. Yes. And we'll do something bigger and like I don't know, smoke in a park or something. We can figure out something. We want to turn it into a cooking show soon. That'd Stay be tuned. So much fun. What? Even like contest. Yeah, that's what just we're just saying. To do. Like contest, okay, big I, contest. I just bought this like book of like things that was big drop with different people, and one of them is that one of the person's blindfolded, and the other person has to tell them how to cook the stuff. That's fire. So you get high, you have to like really have this connection to each other. Listen, you have to trust. It's like yeah, that's hard. Okay. Whoever has the kitchen, let's do this. Like, we can start at any day. Blindfolded? I think it would be hilarious for me to be blindfolded and told how to cook. I'll find a way to mess it up. Dude, I swear, I have a... I feel like, I feel like we could do this in my kitchen. It's a little huge. Okay, any, okay any so time. we'll see you soon. Yes. <laughs> on our new show. Right. Back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Tune in, subscribe, like, talk cast, PDX, Grass Canvas. 621 Southeast 7th Ave. Thank you for tuning in. Keep doing it. Season 2. We made it.